So this video is a little different from my usual tips for seniors videos. A number of you have commented asking, what the heck is an Apple ID and why do I need one? Why can't I use my iPad without an Apple ID? Stuff like that. Well, if you'd like a short lesson on how Apple ID works, then stick around. This video is for you. Hi, my name is Rich and I make easy to follow videos for seniors and beginners on how to use their iPhone and iPad. No complex stuff, no videos with 50 steps to using an app, just short videos containing simple tips that'll have you up and running with your iPad and iPhone in no time. But part of that up and running is setting up an Apple ID. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five main things associated with your Apple ID. We're gonna start with what an Apple ID is. I'll explain that. And then how an Apple ID is used to sync content like contacts and photos and messages and iCloud services, stuff like that. How to locate or lost a stolen device with Find My, which is a little trick an activation lock so a stolen device can't be used, and making App Store purchases. All of these things are tied to your Apple ID. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is what an Apple ID is. Your Apple ID is the account that you use to access services like Apple Music and the App Store and iCloud and text messaging and FaceTime, things like that. Without an Apple ID, you cannot connect to these things. So on your iPhone, this is kind of what it looks like. You set up your Apple ID when you first buy your phone, or if you don't set it up when you buy your phone, you set it up later in the settings app. These are apps that are connected to your Apple ID account. And likewise, over on the iPad, in the settings, you set up your Apple ID there as well. And again, the Apple ID is what connects you to the Apple ecosystem that allows you to buy apps and to um, find your phone if it gets lost, or your iPad if it gets lost, things like that. It's just critical to have an Apple ID. Sometimes people want to use the same Apple ID, two different people. I don't recommend that because things can just get a little bit cloudy. I've tried that myself and it doesn't work. If you're a husband and a wife or a mother and son or something like that, just go ahead and set up two Apple IDs. You can still connect with one another. Make sure you use separate Apple IDs. All right, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is syncing. With an Apple ID, things sync. Without an Apple ID, things don't sync. So let me show you what I mean. If you go to settings and you tap on your Apple ID, here you see it, you put in your phone number and your email address, you set up your password and security, you set up payment and shipping. So if you're buying things on the App Store, you need to have a way to pay for it. If you're buying books from the bookstore, you need to have a way to uh, pay for it. And that's all stored in your Apple ID. Um, and then you can manage subscriptions here too. A lot of applications are uh, a subscription. You don't just buy it once and you're done. You pay for it monthly or you pay for it annually, something like that. And in your Apple ID under subscriptions, you can manage those. I don't have any subscriptions, I don't think here, um, but you can set them up and turn them off and on or cancel the subscription or renew the subscription there. And it's handy to do. You can't do that without an Apple ID. Also, in iCloud, if you tap on this, you have all of the applications that, are, that you have on your iPad here, and you can simply turn on or off iCloud syncing. Again, it's a part of your Apple ID. Why would you wanna sync up, say, your reminders or your notes? Well, if you have an iPhone and an iPad, and you're using iCloud through your Apple ID, and you sync it up here, you turn them on, then what's on your iPad shows up on your iPhone, and what's on your iPhone shows up on your iPad. It's really, really handy to do that. I know when I travel, sometimes I take a lot of notes about my vacation and put it in Apple Notes, 
And then when I'm on the road and I've got my iPhone with me, I can just open up Apple Notes and take a look at it. Couldn't do that without an Apple ID and syncing the apps through iCloud. I hope that makes sense because it's really, really important. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is Find My. Now this is a little app that comes on your iPad uh, and it's kind of buried in there. People don't really pay much attention to it. But the idea of Find My is um, you can locate, literally physically locate on a map, your Apple devices. Again, you have to have an Apple ID for that. And if you turn on Find My, you can find your devices. So if you left your iPad at a neighbor's home or a friend's house and you couldn't remember what you did with it, if you had an iPhone, you could look it up or you can go to your computer, log into your Apple ID and find where you left your iPad. So on the iPad, there is an app called Find Mine. And if you tap on it, you will see all of the devices that I have. And I've got my wife's devices in here as well. I've got the people that I'm uh, sharing information with. I have all of the items and devices there. And if I tap on any one of them, it will show exactly where that item is located. And it gives you the address up here. Of course, I've blurred the address out, but you get the idea. It shows you right where that is located. That's on the Find My app, and without an Apple ID, you wouldn't be able to do that. So having an Apple ID actually helps you locate lost devices using Find My. The next thing I want to talk to you about is something called activation lock. So sometimes people steal iPads and iPhones, but Apple has developed a way to lock the iPhone and the iPad down so that if somebody steals it, they can't get into it, erase it, and then use their own data and sell it again or just keep it. It becomes locked up like a brick. Most thieves know this about iPhones and iPads and therefore they don't even want to try to steal them because it's very difficult to find a way to break into an iPad if you have activation lock turned on. An activation lock is automatically turned on when you turn on Find My, which is what we were just talking about. So if you wanted to turn off activation lock, you would turn off Find My. And how you do that again is you go into settings and you go to Find My and you go to it's, on, it's turned on here. Now this is what a thief would do. They would try to turn off Find My. They don't want you to know where the device is located. So they go here and they go to turn off Find My and now it pops up and it wants your Apple ID and password. You cannot turn off Find My ID without the Apple ID and password. And the thief is not going to have that. So they cannot turn off Find My. In the meantime, you can use your iPhone and you can find out where your iPad is located. So that is just a really handy anti-theft device, activation lock. All right, the last thing that Apple ID is tied to and probably the most um, practical thing you will use the Apple ID for is accessing the App Store. When you buy something from the App Store, even if it's a free app, it's tied to your Apple ID. And so if you upgrade your iPad two years from now or three years from now or one year from now and you log back into your Apple ID that you set up, then all of the purchases that you made in the App Store are there. You don't have to buy them again for the new iPad. You've already paid for them once and now you're just going to put them on a new iPad. And this is how that works. If you go to the App Store and you see a bunch of apps here, maybe you want to buy one. Well, let's see, I'll just type on, tap on tip. TikTok, I don't have that. And if you'll notice, it's wanting my Touch ID to install. That's because it's tied to my Apple ID and it's wanting to know if I want to install that. So 
I have Touch ID on this. Um, if you have an iPad Pro, there may be Face ID. So people can't just get your iPad and put apps on it without you knowing. You have to be the one to do that. And it's a great way to control what goes onto your iPad. And it's a way to keep track of everything that's gone on your iPad. So that is a great reason, and probably the primary reason, you need Apple ID. I know that was a lot to take in, and as usual, I've just scratched the surface. But the reality is, you don't really need to worry about much of this stuff. Once you create an Apple ID and set your preferences, you're pretty much finished. So don't be afraid to set up an Apple ID. It's the key to the Apple ecosystem you need to make using your iPad the best experience ever. Well, I hope this short video helped you understand the necessity of an Apple ID. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.